Well, I'm back after another long pause, and it's all very technical again. This is a, the one we're going to do, the commando car. Um, and this I made this a very long time ago, but I haven't been able to get access to the outside world, really, because after the hot spell we had, the computer's fan broke down. So I took it to one of the sort of famous high street companies to get it repaired, and they repaired it pretty quickly, and then we just got lots of phone calls saying, do we agree that the job's complete, is it the job we wanted doing, and would we like the computer returning? Yes, but for some reason they just didn't return the computer, so then we'd go through more phone calls. And then we went on holiday. And then we came back and we found that there was a phone message saying we could pick the computer up from the store probably 24 hours after we'd gone on holiday. So that was great. So eventually we picked it up, plugged it in, and then the weather changed. And the wind blew and it rained and we lost power for a couple of days. There's a fallen tree and uh, we lost phone line. There's some very angry bulls. And that means I haven't been able to get onto the internet to put this out. So anyway, at last, everything's repaired. And here we go. Commando car. Here we have Commando car. Um, I don't, I'm not familiar with the phrase Commando car. Uh, but there we are. 135th scale Italeri. Um, and it claims to be a sort of British conversion of um, an American Jeep along the lines of the SAS um, uh, kind of Jeep, not exactly conversions, just packing, um, which uh, the SAS used in the desert, which is a very good model made by Tamiya, which I think is still available. That was a really bad sentence structure, but never mind, we'll move on. Anyway, this uh, claims to be a sort of version of that, which was use, used from D-Day, or thereabouts, and could be put into aircraft and gliders. I knew nothing about this. It's all very exciting. Um, as usual, the vehicle is covered in bristling with machine guns, as they might say, and covered in stuff. Um, frighteningly, these are enormous fuel tanks. There's one there and one there. And there's a double machine gun incredibly close. That is scary. Meanwhile, over here, the price, I got it second hand. And hopefully that is a, a good price for this. Maybe this is old and you can't get it anymore. Anyway, but underneath, some kind of oriental writing. That's interesting. So is this uh, a kind of reissue by Italeri from somebody else's model? Um, who knows? Anyway, it's quite good. I've made a start on it already, because uh, I thought, well, straightforward Jeep. Um, and that's the point which I've taken it to. So here we have the underside, the chassis, standard stuff. I remember making several of these when I was a kid. Um, not too complex, which is all right. Uh, makes it go nice and easy. Then there's the Jeep itself, or the, the body. I haven't glued the oil tanks in, so that I can take them out. Everything's just kind of undercoat at the moment, so don't worry about the colour. But what is interesting, the first sort of variation from the basics, is this <coughs> reinforced... I guess it's a windscreen. Cool, the light's gone bad. I brought this over here because I thought the light would be good. Uh, but there it is. As I say, kind of reinforced windscreen. There's only half of it. There's another half to go with a machine gun pointing through it. So that's uh, very interesting. Not familiar with that at all. Um, and it's a typical British kind of boffins at work, soup things up, jobby. We can't invent something as good as a jeep, but once we get our hands on it, we can do all sorts with it. 
and then just a few bits and pieces standard stuff and here's the extra whoops can't find the camera there's the extra reinforcing plate for the windscreen so that I believe will sit on there quite forward I've just propped it up it shouldn't go at that angle but you get the idea um, these tanks are nice frightening but nice and I will um, sort out the paintwork on those as well so we'll get there in the end so far so good it's been very easy very straightforward um, job to do and um, enjoyable so there'll be more shortly see you in a bit this is one more little step in the right direction um, here is the Jeep itself pretty much basic as I said before apart from the fuel tanks there and the amended windscreen uh, for want of a better word but there we have it a basic straightforward Jeep so now we'll move on to putting all the machine guns and all the baggage on board then tidy up the paintwork uh, and see what happens from there. Oh, a bit of light shining through, I think. That wasn't good. So, let's get my hand out of the way. So, another case of so far, so good. I'm enjoying it, and it's coming out quite nicely. Not, not going too badly for me. Here we are with the Italeri Commando car complete. Every part um, which is relevant to this model has been put on. And I've put it on pretty much where it belongs. Give or take one or two funny little bits. Um, such an achievement, I know, is what I'm supposed to be doing, but I usually fail. I usually manage to break two or three parts, usually the small delicate ones, and probably lose two or three. Not this time. Hooray! <laughs> so here it is. Done. And um, I liked doing this one. This really was quite good. I enjoy what the British did to military vehicles, whether it's the Sherman Firefly with the upgraded gun, or, you know, there's one of the cockerels. Or whether it's this kind of thing. There's an air of aggressive boffin about them. Just bristling with machine guns. The Tamiya um, SAS um, Jeep thing. I can't remember what it was called. That was a good example too. As I said, I'm not so familiar with this. I'm not so familiar with the kind of European theatre version. But it's just an idea, isn't it? You just put this idea into practice and the Jeep's very robust and very amenable to such things so yeah tons of stuff I I must say I wouldn't want to sit so close to such huge fuel tanks but well there we are that's how these things go and I've just realized having said that I've put everything on I lie. I haven't put the driver in. In fact, I haven't made the driver. I've just given him a base coat and that's that. So, time to go and do that. I'll be back shortly and uh, we'll get him done. And here he is, the um, driver whom I had forgotten. Whom I had forgot. Whichever. Uh, the light's really not good on him. It was looking all right earlier. I've basically done him in a car key. I've given him a pale belt. He is an American, but as I said before, with his feet down under the dashboard, not a lot of that will be noticeable. His jacket isn't very British, but never mind. 
his sleeves and cuffs are. And I've given him, I'm going to give him a beret. And I've given him a deep red one. I did check in a couple of books and a website. Um, some commandos had green, some commandos had red. I think a couple had black. I'm not sure what units they relate to. But anyway, there he is. Um, the seams on his trousers look rough in this light as well. And his face doesn't look as good as I thought. So there's a bit of tidying up to do. I'll put him together and I'll put him in the car. I think I've got everything done now. I've done the driver. He looks a little bit rough. Now we're on camera, so maybe he needs a tidy up. But that is that, as far as I can tell. And um, to my mind, it's gone okay. In fact, it may be the best one I've done so far. And that is uh, something I need to bear in mind, if nothing else. You may disagree. But there he is. Now there's a tendency, I say this as if I'm doing it all the time, when I was a kid and I was making things like this, I had a tendency to put loads of bags, buckets, I don't know what, junk, all over these things. Um, <clears throat> but I'm resisting. The temptation is still there. Um, so... I'm just going to leave it to all the relevant parts, all the parts that come with the model, and just gently paint them. Yeah, another tendency was to weather things to death. I mean, they were so weathered they would have fallen apart, which is fun, but I'm going to resist. And that means we are finished, I believe. Do you know? I don't think so far I've made a single model where I've got to the point where I think right we're finished that's it and then I come back and think oh no I've got to do this this and this in this case we might be done the driver I'm happy with it would be nice if he was a little bit more British in detail but well that jacket isn't showing up badly is it open necks a bit a bit uncivilized, particularly in Europe, particularly on sort of around the D-Day period. The only thing I've really not exactly added, but I've made a judgment on, is having given him the beret, he then had a tin helmet, which is obvious there. So I've put it close to him. Uh, oh, I suppose the other thing I made a judgment call is on the box. There's a Bren gun and Bren gun ammunition sitting on, where are we, sitting on this fuel tank. Oh, I think the ammunition pouch is there. Um, and maybe one other loose thing lying around, oh, a German machine gun. I've tucked that in there because I want this to look like it's a bit more mobile. It's on the go. So there's our, I've for, completely forgotten what they're called used to rattle that off and I've put the Bren gun being a bit rough now the Bren gun and the ammunition pouch on that side I've put the pouch as if it's attached to the handle which lies above and really I should put some kind of cord or strap onto that Everything else could be wedged, why not? So apart from that, without adding anything, without going to town on the detail, there it is. Done. And I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> Let's see how long I can resist it, really. But yeah, I'm going to basically leave it at that. For as long as possible and we'll watch out to see what goes wrong next and how I get carried away so I think that is it for now thank you for watching I hope um, it taught everybody lots of lessons 
based on all my errors, mistakes and just bad judgement. And I hope it was in some way fun. I think it's a good model, I enjoyed it, so well done. I've just realised that's the first figure I've painted, or made. Um, apart from the Black Prince that is, but he sort of doesn't count, if you see what I mean, he was a project in himself. But, this is the first, 135th. Blasted little man's not holding on to the steering wheel, is he? Twit. Oh well, so much for sophisticated shot. So I suppose, there, I suppose he's alright for a first time, although his lips are a bit dark, red. Looks like he's having a heart attack. And um, I thought I'd got all the joins and all the seams sorted out. But they're looking a bit rough. So I might go back and tidy him up. Meanwhile, the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed in the background a swim wagon. Kind of halfway through that, so we'll see that one later. And then you'll see shortly, as I develop this kind of landscape thing, in the background there's two of the Tamiya SAS Jeeps, the desert versions. They're just there for fun. And a whacking great Churchill in the background, the notorious Churchill tank. So there's um, a lot to consider, actually. Uh, hopefully these will all come up later. In the interim, I moved outside to get a bit of light, at least get some sort of sense of colour and shadow. Um, and you can see the SAS jeep SAS the desert versions and now here we are in this wonderful landscape which um, I've thrown together from those vacuum formed things most of which are actually 170 seconds so I do apologize to the purists out there oh and I noticed there's quite a few comments recently so I'll get back to those as soon as possible and finally, by the way, I've no idea what's coming next, and I don't, I've don't. i completely lost track of everything in the world, so I'll have a rummage, see what I've got recorded, and pick something out. Uh, yeah, that's all. Bye for now.